Are you new to coding? I'm Professor John Gallagher, and if you're looking for a gentle intro to Swift UI for the absolute beginner, you're in the right place. In this lesson, we'll show you how images display on screen using VStacks and HStacks. We'll work with basic system images, we'll change the image size and color, and we'll change text, font, and font weight. Now I'm assuming if you're here, you've already got Xcode installed and configured on your Mac, and you've taken our quick Xcode tour. If not, you'll want to start at the first few videos of the playlist, which will set you up. It's time to start coding. In the last lesson, we created a project named Great. It's in the Great folder. I'll double click great.xcodeproj to get back into that project. Now you might already be here if you were working directly from the last lesson, the Xcode tour. And for now, we're gonna be working in the content view file. So make sure that's clicked. We'll have the navigator to give us more room and I'll resume the preview and make the preview area smaller. And I'll also increase the font size for you by clicking in the editor and pressing shift command plus a few times. So content view is a file Xcode creates when we create a new app project and we'll start by ignoring things in this file. The file always has a struct with the name of the file content view and we'll always have a body variable. That's the var body part. Ignore these, no need to pay attention to them for now. Xcode always gives us that. We need it. Thank you, Xcode. Providing detail at this stage isn't useful, but we do want to focus on this middle stuff here. The stuff in the vstack through dot padding. And I'll click behind the opening curly brace and body and press return, and also after the closing parenthesis and padding and press return, just to give myself a little bit more space. This will make it easier to see the area that we're going to be focusing on. Also, some more quick tips here. If you double click one curly brace, Xcode will highlight all the code between it and its matching brace. And also, if you head over here to this area in the left, it's called the code folding ribbon. I mentioned this in the prior lesson, and you'll see down and up pointing arrows indicating the boundaries of the braces that match the section that you're positioned in. And if you double click in here, you can toggle Xcode to hide the code between the curlies or double click again and it will open the code back up. These are especially useful tips when you've got more code in your editor. And if we take a look at the words inside, you might be able to get an idea what's going on here. Now this block of code creates what we're seeing in the preview. I'll click the zoom to 100% icon at the bottom of the preview so that we can better see what's in the preview. And we see a blue image of a globe and the text, hello world. And if we look at our code in the editor, we see the word image with a capital I and inside that it says system name and the word globe between double quotes. If you guess that draws the image of the globe, Smarty, you're spot on correct. And then below that is text with a capital T with the words hello world between double quotes. And you're correct in assuming that that draws text on screen. Cool. Now in Swift UI, we refer to objects drawn on screen as views. Image is a view. Text is a view. We capitalize the word for the view. Now notice the words image and text are indented. They're inside curly braces inside this thing called VStack. Curly braces act as a container, so the image and the text are contained inside the VStack. What's a VStack? It means a vertical stack, meaning the views inside the container, inside the curly braces, are stacked vertically in the app. Smart person that you are, you might wonder, Hmm, if there's a vertical stack, I wonder if there's a horizontal stack. Yes, there is. What do you think it's called? If you guessed HStack, you're thinking like a programmer. So let's change the V in VStack so that it's an H reading HStack. Backspace over that V, type capital H, make sure there's no extra space between the H and the S, and look at that magic. The preview now shows the image with the text following it stacked horizontally left to right. Magnificent! Now I want to go back to the VStack, so I'm going to type Command Z to undo my last action. In fact, that's a good pro tip. If you ever enter code and your project stops working, you can repeatedly press Command Z to undo each individual step and to return to the spot where your code was working. Now you understand two Swift UI statements, VStack, it's important to get the spelling right, capital V and capital S, that stacks things vertically, and here's another keyboard shortcut, Shift Command Z will redo the last step, that redoes the H stack, capital H, capital S, which stacks those views horizontally. Let's Command Z one more time to go back to VStack. Now let's look at the text view. The text view has parentheses and the stuff inside the parens are any values that should be used to display this view. So inside the parens we see hello world, inside double quotes. Characters inside double quotes are called strings in programming languages. Swift strings are always enclosed in double quotes. Xcode also kindly pretty prints so I can see the string is isolated red, at least it is in the theme that I'm using in Xcode. Eventually you'll learn if the colors ever seem off, there's probably an error in your code. Now let's change what we see in those double quotes. Since you're now coding, let's replace hello world with the bold declaration, I am a programmer, exclamation point. And will you look at that coder? The preview redraws the app with the new string looking good. 
Now, sometimes you'll mistype things in the editor and you'll get an error. This happens all the time. You'll see me make errors in our tutorials. Now, sometimes Xcode gives you helpful error messages. Many times they're not helpful and can be confusing. So let's quickly make some errors together. Type along with me so that you see these common errors and they don't seem so scary. First, let's delete the double quotes around our string. Remember, Swift strings need double quotes. And when I remove them, the red pretty printing goes away. And that's because Xcode doesn't see this as a string anymore. Now, I also see that the words I and M are underlined in red. That's Xcode's best guess that there's probably a problem right here. So if you run into an error, look for the red underlines. They're not always there, but when they are, they can be helpful. Now, I also see angry red in a few places in Xcode. If you click in the circle with the X in the upper right, this shows there are three errors or three things that Xcode can't figure out. Now, none of these error messages is especially helpful. Click the red circle again to hide those three error messages. Note that our preview has also stopped, and you can also click on the circle in red highlighted to the right of our code. Now, note that this has a three next to it. Again, Xcode found three things that it can't figure out, so that's why we have three errors. Go ahead and click on that circle, and again, we see three errors that are not very helpful. There's also a fix button in here, and sometimes fix can help you fix the errors. It won't provide a helpful fix in this case, so we're going to ignore it. You can just click back in the editor to get rid of the list of three errors. And I can look back at those red underlines and you might remember, ah, I need to put in double quotes. So if you start by putting a double quote in front of the I, if we wait a bit, Xcode now shows there are two errors, not three errors. We see that things start to pretty print as red, but they never stop on this line because we don't have our closing double quote. So we can click on the red circle to the right again. We see two errors, we see a fix. Again, that fix won't do anything useful here. But the last error says unterminated string literal. When you type in a string between double quotes, it's called a literal. Unterminated means there's no termination or end. That means there's no double quote. So if we enter our closing double quote just before the closing parenthesis, we see the errors go away. Preview resumes. Nice. By the way, we'll also get an error if we remove the closing parenthesis. This is a much more helpful error message. It says expected ending parenthesis in expression. So type that closing parenthesis and everything works. So hopefully if you followed along, you can now recognize errors when you see them and you can fix these very common errors. Now let's look at our image view. Now indented underneath the image view are two lines that begin with periods or dots. One says dot image scale. The other says dot foreground style. These are called modifiers and they, surprise, surprise, modify the view above them. So let's start with dot foreground style. It also has parentheses to accept a value or parameter where we can say how we want to modify the foreground style. Now, most of the time when you use foreground style, you'll supply a color to use to draw that view. Now, right now it says dot tint in between parens. This says modify the image so that it's foreground style, meaning the color we use to draw it, will be drawn using the iPhone's tint. Now, the default is medium blue. That's why the globe is showing up in blue. Now, the dot in front of tint means this is a predefined value that's named tint. Now let's change this. So I'm going to click behind the last T in tint. I'm going to delete that. I'm also going to delete the period or the dot in front of it. And now type a period again. And whoa, we see that Xcode offers us some help. This is code completion in action. Xcode knows that we're inside the foreground style modifier and that you'll often want to use colors here. So what it shows you are a bunch of predefined colors, dot yellow, black, blue, brown. And we can either move our mouse cursor down and scroll up up and down in the list, or you can use your down and up arrows to navigate through the list. And let's highlight pink. And when we press return, oh, looks like Barbie globe. Now backspace to delete dot pink and retype dot. And now type the letter P as well. And what you see here is that Xcode uses all of the letters that we've typed so far, and it shows us just those options that contain, in this case, P. So we see the colors pink and purple. We also see primary and placeholder. And below this, we see something called linear gradient. Now, if you look further back, you can see that there actually is a letter P in here that's highlighted in bold. So we have lots of different options that show up. Now, this is really nice because you can type just a few letters and Xcode will provide you with the options that are available. For example, type U and with dot PU in here, we see the only option that has a P and a U in there is purple. Now you can absolutely just go ahead and type the color you want, but if you let Xcode finish your typing for you, that can avoid typos. Sometimes there's some specific capitalization that Swift UI needs, and Xcode will always get that right. So with purple highlighted, press return, and the world turns purple. Prince would approve. Now let's see what options are available for this image scale modifier. So if we backspace over the dot large and type dot again, we see large, medium, and small are the options. Let's try medium. 
the globe gets smaller, let's try small, and ooh, that's quite pequeño. So let's go back to dot large, and I'll show you how we can make this much larger, because the large option actually isn't that large. But first, let's learn how we can change the image that our view draws. So the word image to draw our image view is followed by parentheses. There are different ways we can set up an image view, but the option that Xcode has given us by default accepts what's called a system name. And if we enter a string after the system name, and that string matches a predefined system name or symbol, that symbol will show. Now there are hundreds of predefined system names that we can use. Let's change the globe to cloud, all lowercase, and we get a happy little cloud. Bob Ross would be proud of you. Now type over cloud and replace that with iPhone, all lowercase letters, and an iPhone symbol shows up. Now capitalization counts. If we capitalize the P in iPhone, there's no system name that matches with I capital P phone. Xcode doesn't show an error, but it doesn't show any image because there's no symbol with the system name. So I'll undo to show the proper string for iPhone, and let's double click to highlight the entire word iPhone between the double quotes, and I'll show you another way to quickly change this. Because you're probably wondering, hey Prof G, how can I find out the names of these hundreds of different images of which you speak? Well, one way is by going to the library. Click on this plus sign in the upper right. That opens up what's called the Xcode library. And a few things about this library. We can change its look. In the upper right hand corner, we see that there are a couple of icons. One looks like four squares. If you click this, it switches to icon view. I find that less helpful, so I'm gonna click it again to return to list view. And the icon to the right of this will hide or show details. I don't think it takes up that much room. I like to show the details, so I'm gonna keep the details showing. And across the top bar, you'll see icons to open the library for particular elements. This first First one is highlighted, it looks like a square with a dot in it. That will show you the views library. The one to the right is the modifiers library. To the right of that is the code snippets library. Then there's the images library. There's nothing in here, but you can add your own images. There's the colors library that would show any custom colors that you've added. And finally, if we click on the icon with the little star, it brings up the symbols library. That's the one we want. And gadzooks, my friends, look at all of these options. We can scroll through the list. You see there's so much in here. Let's scroll down to trash and look at all these. We've got trash, trash.circle, trash.circle.fill. Let's double click on trash.circle.fill and the library goes away. And and the string for trash.circle.fill is entered automatically between our double quotes. And we see we're ready for Oscar the Grouch. We've got the trash in our view. Nice. Now you can also, of course, just type in the string if you'd like. Now if I backspace and change what's between the double quotes, the image will go away and I won't see anything until I reach another valid image. So if I get rid of dot fill, then I'll see trash.circle. If I get rid of dot circle, I'll see the symbol for trash. Nice. Now let's learn another way to insert the image for a symbol. And to show you this way, let's highlight and delete the entire image view line along with its parameter. And let's keep the modifiers down here. Xcode doesn't like this. It says there are errors. We can't enter view modifiers without first entering a view. But let's click plus to pull up the library. Once again, we're in the symbols library. And while we can scroll through and see all of these different options, there's also a search box up here in the upper left. So you can enter, for example, the word sun. And wow, look at this. We see all these weather related options showing symbols that contain a sun. Now we're learning Swift. So why don't we backspace over sun and replace that with Swift. And we don't have any Taylor in here, but we do have a couple of Swift icons. Now watch what I'm gonna do here, follow along. I'm gonna click on that first Swift, hold down my mouse and drag it into my code. My library window goes away and if I release right on top of that blank line above my modifiers, Xcode enters the image view, parentheses, the system name argument label followed by a colon and the correct string for Swift. And I see the Swift is in my preview, looking fantastic. Why don't we make this orange since the Swift symbol is usually a reddish orange. And now let's learn how we can make this image even larger. To do this, we'll need to get rid of the dot image scale modifier and enlist the help of a couple more modifiers. So let's highlight and backspace over the entire line containing image scale, including its starting dot. And then we'll type another dot and ho ho, Xcode shows us a ton of options, all of which we can enter right here. The modifier that we want is called resizable. So let's start typing that word after the dot, R E S I. And when we type the first four letters, the only option left is for the resizable modifier. Now some things to notice here. There's a description here that says sets the mode by which Swift UI resizes an image to fit its space. So this means it's going to take up the available space on our iPhone screen. Now there are a few more things that we can see in here. By the way, you can click on the edges of the description box and expand it like a window. Otherwise the words wrap, but we see the same content. 
Now, if we take a look at this line, we see that the M means that this is a modifier. It's called resizable. The parentheses are followed by content inside that's in italics. Now, the italics mean that this is optional. We don't need to enter italicized arguments. If not, SwiftUI will use some default values, but if they were required, then these arguments would not be italicized. Now, the arrow after the parenthesis means that this modifier returns a modified image view. So let's press return and see what Resizable does. And ho oh, ho, it takes up all of the available space. So let's click the zoom to fit icon in the preview so that we can see the entire iPhone preview. So Resizable also distorted the ratio of width to height. That's called the aspect ratio. That pushes the edges of this image out to fill up the entire available space. We can see that our text view is pushed way down to the bottom. Now this is big and it's not really what we want, but we can fix this. We just need another modifier. So below dot resizable, let's enter dot and start typing in scaled to, and we see a bunch of options in here. We want the one that's scaled to fit. Now this says when it's highlighted that it scales the view to fit its parent, meaning the view that this view is inside of. So the image view is just inside of our iPhone. So it will take up all the space that's available. But what the description doesn't say, and it really should, is that this will keep the width and height, the aspect ratio the same. So the image won't be distorted and the image will not be cut off. So we'll see the entire image in here. So scaled to fit is usually what you want to use. So we'll press return to accept this. Scale to fit modifies and returns this image and this looks much nicer. Cool. Now let's finish up this lesson by adding some modifiers to our text view. The font is kind of small and I think being a programmer is fantastic. So let's make this a larger font. We can add a line below the text view, press dot, and we'll type the word font. And we see a bunch of different options in here. Font width, font weight. We just want the straight up font modifier. So make sure that's highlighted. Code completion says this sets the default font for the text in the view. That's what we want. And notice what else Xcode is showing us. We see that there are parentheses following font and the value font between the parentheses is not italicized. That means it's not optional, so we're gonna to have to put a font in here. The arrow followed by the closing parentheses says that this returns a modified text view for us. That's what we want. And not to overload you with too much information, but we have an underscore in here before the argument label. Now, when we see that, we actually won't see an argument label between parentheses. Sometimes the argument label shows up. Xcode will put that in for you automatically, so you don't have to worry about it. But you see where we have system name and the colon up here in the image view, that's an argument label. So let's press return and accept this font modifier. We see the parameter dot title is highlighted. So dot title must be a font. It's already included in here. We can see that increase the size of our font a little bit. It must be larger than the default font. Let's backspace to delete this and let's type a dot. We see a whole bunch of different predefined fonts in here. You can experiment with these on your own, but the largest one is dot large title. So let's select that. And my text is modified now. We see the new font. It's nice and big. How about we change the weight of the font. Well, below this, we can enter yet another modifier. Type dot font. This time, let's select font weight. And Xcode says this sets the font weight of the text. It wants a font weight parameter in here. Let's press return. Oh, it added a default parameter in here, which is dot bold. Look at this. The text is now bold. Let's delete dot bold. Type dot again to see the different font weights that are available. Super cool. Black is the darkest. The lightest is dot ultra light. Let's try that out. Ooh, and it looks design worthy cool. We'll keep that. Feel free to return and experiment with this on your own. I think we've got enough for this lesson. We've had some big learning in here. We covered V stacks, H stacks, views. We work with image and text views. We work with modifiers. We added our own modifiers, including resizable, scale to fit, font, and font weight. We learned to recognize errors and work with Xcode's code completion and the library. In our next lesson, we're going to add a button so we can add some interactivity to our app. Until then, continue to hack.